Good morning and welcome back to Y254. This is Y in the morning and remember this is Health on Monday. If you'd like to talk to us and ask some questions about what we're going to be discussing today, please remember that you can do so on hashtag Y in the morning and hashtag Health on Monday and that you can do that on our social media uh, handles that is on Facebook and Twitter, Y254 channel as well as Instagram, Y254 underscore channel and we're also on DSTV now channel 376. If you'd like to watch a repeat of this interview, you can do so at 2 p.m. later on in this afternoon. Remember, today is World Autoimmune Disease Day, where we raise awareness for various autoimmune diseases. And we have a wonderful person who's on set to, uh, with us today and is actually an expert in this particular area. He is a physician as well as a rheumatologist. And his name is Dr. Eugene Ganga. He's not only a physician and a rheumatologist, he is an adv advocate for student athlete. He'll explain a little bit more about that later. And also he coaches and mentors with the University of Nairobi basketball team. Ah, a man with a heart, it seems. <laughs> Karib Busana, Dr. Asante. Eugene. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, so please tell us a little bit about the coaching and mentorship before we discuss the rheumatology. Okay, so um, uh, currently I help coach and mentor mm -hmm. the University of Nairobi team. Mm -hmm. And Nairobi school because mm -hmm. uh, I've learned there's a lot of issues with the boy child okay. so it's just a way of giving back to society mm -hmm. so apart from empowering them with the basketball skills mm -hmm. we also take them through some mentorship uh, program okay yeah I see. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Well, today, um, you know, you're a physician and a rheumatologist. Yes. Can you please explain to our viewers what a rheumatologist is? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can dive right in. What okay. does a rheumatologist do? So, um, the rheumatology is a field that is not well understood, especially in this part of the world. Okay. Uh, what they basically, what a rheumatologist, first of all, is you, ma you first do your undergraduate, become a doctor, then do your master's, which is internal medicine then you specialize now in, in rheumatology. So mm -hmm. rheumatology uh, basically looks at uh, connective tissue diseases, mm -hmm. musculoskeletal uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the examples of things we deal with are things like arthritis, uh, back pain, uh, diseases like lupus, uh, muscle diseases, amongst many other conditions. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you uh, for bringing up lupus because as much as today is World Autoimmune Disease Day and we're going to be focusing on a particular autoimmune disease that we know uh, as well as rheumatology. Ah, I say these words that we know well as arthritis, but an autoimmune form of it. And actually this whole month we're going to be celebrating World Lupus Month. month. Yes, yes mm -hmm. it is. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a connection between the two, you said. Yes. Hi, Abbas. Maybe mm -hmm. we can dive right in. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between normal arthritis and autoimmune arthritis? Mm -hmm. So I think to make it clearer, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically, let's go to the basic of the science. Okay. When we say autoimmune, mm -hmm. uh, what basically mean is that the body is unable to recognize between yourself and a foreign object. Mm. So the natural response of the body is to attack a foreign object, right? for example, like an infection. Right. Yeah, so the body's response to attack it. But when you have autoimmune conditions, the body cannot differentiate the two. Mm -hmm. So it ends up attacking also your body. Mm. So it can manifest in very many conditions. It can affect your joints, muscles, mm -hmm. uh, blood vessels, oh. heart, lung, best practically any part of of your body. Right. Yes. And so that is the science of it. Yes, that's the science of it. So right. uh, in terms of uh, the difference between the two, uh, okay, well, with arthritis, we usually have two types. There's the auto-inflammatory, the autoimmune, sorry, and the non-autoimmune. So for most of our viewers, they are more, uh, more likely to know the non-autoimmune. So the non-autoimmune is more common in the elderly. Uh, we call it osteoarthritis. So basically, the science would give a very simple explanation is that um, the grease in the joint runs out, so there's a lot of friction. Mm. From the friction, you get uh, arthritis. So arthritis basically is joint pain. Versus autoimmune, which is different in that when your body is unable to recognize your normal joint from a foreign object, it mm. attacks now your joint. Wow. And now this one is mm. now more common in the mm. younger age group now. 
I see. Yes. And mm. more common in the younger age group. Yes. Because we do tend to uh, link arthritis to an older age group. That's when true. When you hear the word arthritis, you mm -hmm. think of um, the senior yes. members of so society, the mm -hmm. older people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, uh, I, I was also surprised to learn mm -hmm. that it's something that's affecting our youth. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to take that angle when mm -hmm. we're discussing because this is a youth channel. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. please remember, once again, if you are a parent and you are interested in what we're discussing or you've got a child that is going through through what we are discussing, please reach out to us on hashtag Health on Monday and hashtag Why in the Morning and send your questions to us, Tafadali. Um, please, let's continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, you said that this is what we recognize in children. Yes. What are some of those signs? Okay, so that maybe a can look out can for? Look out for. Maybe the first thing is maybe to define arthritis. Arthritis is just basically a joint pain. Okay. And it can be caused by all sorts of Things. So basically, the first you are saying, especially in the younger age group, for babies and children is a bit difficult, mm. but you probably notice they either walk with a limp, mm. some unexplained fatigue, unexplained fevers, unexplained joint pains here today, tomorrow they are okay. When you get towards the adolescent age group, it's a bit now more defined that because the, the patients are more advanced. I'll tell you now, is this not is painful or is swollen or the back has issues. There's one particular arthritis uh, we call ankylosing spondylitis. It's very common mm -hmm. in the younger age group because uh, what happens is that you find a patient wakes up in the morning mm -hmm. and the back is stiff. The back is stiff? It's stiff, yes. Okay. And when the back is stiff, it means you can be stiff for about even 30, 30 minutes. You're just in the bed? Just in the bed. Mm -hmm. So once, the bo once your body, you're like a slow engine, as you warm up and everything there, the pain now disappears. So usually, um, Another thing which can help, especially the younger age group, because uh, where, where we teach, we tell our, patient, our students to differentiate between what is autoimmune pain versus non-autoimmune pain. So the autoimmune pain mm -hmm. is basically pain that's worse in the morning okay. and gets better with activity. Okay. And that is what is more common with the younger age group. Right. Versus the older one, when you get the wear and tear, is pain that is worse with activity, meaning that you'll be maybe we walk the whole day, at the end of the day, when you want to rest, that's when the pain does what? Subsides. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Apart from that, uh, especially in the younger age group, sometimes we get some unusual presentations for, for arthritis. Mm -hmm. uh, some certain heart conditions mm -hmm. can, can put you at risk of developing arthritis. When you have diseases like lupus, uh, which is basically a systemic disease, can come with also arthritis also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. All right, we'll touch on lupus just yes. a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can still continue to talk about, since you've said what arthritis is, we've yes. separated the difference between normal arthritis mm -hmm. and autoimmune arthritis yes. and how it may affect people of different ages. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right, when I was doing some research yesterday, I, I learned that when it comes to places like the US, mm -hmm. they have particular statistics that they've taken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And right now they're standing at, I think it was 300,000 youth, mm -hmm, 300,000 mm -hmm. children basically, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are carrying um, specifically yes. autoimmune arthritis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Unfortunately, here in Kenya, mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have uh, specific numbers that we're working with mm -hmm. and we'll talk more about how to reduce those numbers mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. for now the numbers that we do have mm -hmm. are there any how can i say apart from this particular day to raise awareness mm -hmm. are there any organizations that are catering mm -hmm. to to dealing with children with this or is it just you know you just have to go to the doctor and he'll refer you mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in terms of rheumatology in Kenya, we are still very, very, I'll put it in the Stone Age. Okay. Because take, for example, the number of rheumatologists in Kenya mm -hmm. are less than 10, serving a population oh, of about wait, wait 40, yes. The number of rheumatologists mm. in Kenya are yes. less than 10? Yes. Wow. Mm. And that is the major, the major drawback. Because um, in order to raise awareness, we also need to improve the, the personnel. Another shocking statistic is that there's only one public uh, hospital where if you have arthritis you can be seen, which is Kenyatta. So it means that if you have arthritis, the only place you can access apart from Kenyatta would be a private hospital. A private hospital. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the issues we have with arthritis. Mm -hmm. I'll give another example like for the children arthritis. There's a paper which we did some research mm -hmm. on uh, arthritis in children and a lot of them were coming late meaning that there have been so many doctors 
Mm. By the time they're landing on us, it's less sometimes one year, even two years. That's in the children. Mm. In the adults, uh, the exact figure was about 60-70 percent were coming after a year, a year and a half, which is which is surprising. So it means that I think awareness on the ground is not it's not the best. Mm -hmm. And also two, we need to imp we need to empower our need to empower like our our upcoming doctors. Mm. Another shocking thing is that if you look at the universities that teach medicine, apart from University of Nairobi and maybe Egerton, not Egerton, uh, Moy University, they're the only hospitals that have actually got a rheumatology sitting there. Yeah, the other, in, other teaching uh, universities that teach medicine have no rheumatologists there. So you can see there's a really, mm. there's a big shortfall in terms of that. Right. Right. In terms of organizations, nothing so far. Yeah. There have been a couple of initiatives. There's one called Uwezo Initiative. Mm -hmm. So basically, Uwezo Initiative was an initiative of uh, some fellows from Sweden, England, and Kenya. So the idea was they were trying to empower the local clinicians. So they organized workshops for the doctors, for the physiotherapists, and also for the patients. Uh, and it's something which has been started. So we're hoping with time, you can be able to pick up and hopefully at least help in terms of managing these uh, conditions better. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. And speaking of managing conditions, but actually that's really sad because it looks like there's a really big gap, yes. both in physicians and both in um, pediatricians. Um, raising awareness. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's just a huge gap everywhere when mm -hmm. it comes mm -hmm. to uh, arthritis in yes. every single form. Mm -hmm. And we'll, work, we'll talk about ways in we can change that, but mm -hmm. speaking of how to manage this mm -hmm. disease, mm -hmm. specifically autoimmune arthritis, mm -hmm. A young person that is watching right now, mm -hmm. maybe that is uh, undergoing, or a laptop parent who has a child that mm -hmm. is undergoing, mm -hmm. what are some of the ways they can manage the mm -hmm. pain? Because you did say that it's joint pain yes. normally, and we yes. have the joints, you know, in our wrists and mm -hmm. our elbows, mm -hmm. our knees, mm -hmm. and it could be anywhere. Yes. And then it can even affect your organs up to some point. Mm -hmm. How can they manage this pain? Mm -hmm. So usually management. Uh, what I what I what I do with my patients, the first thing is education. Because for a lot of parents, they find it very hard to imagine that their 14-year-old child has, has arthritis. Yeah. And that usually is the biggest problem because they'll see you, move to another doctor, move to another doctor, mm -hmm. eventually a witch doctor. Yeah. <laughs> These are because bad. They, they are, my child doesn't have arthritis. Have, cannot have arthritis. So usually the first thing is empowering the patient, yeah. empowering also the, 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 the parents. About the patient, because a lot of, like, especially the teenagers, teenagers are a bit difficult because there's a lot of issues in terms of acceptance. Why am I taking medicine at this young age? Uh, other things that what will my friends think about me when I'm taking medicine? So empowering them, isn't it, is mm -hmm. something which you need to do. And one of the things which I tell my patients is that, if because most of the conferences I've attended, the leading, leading doctors in, in arthritis for the youth are actually patients. So they started as patients mm. and became doctors and became leading. And so they actually, the guys were driving because they've been through it. Mm -hmm. so they've been able to, to make it. So that's some of the things I used to empower the patient. Right. So in terms of medicine, uh, there are a number of options that are available, mm -hmm. a number, number, number of options, depending on the cause. Uh, usually, uh, education is very important because people go and Google. Like one of the drugs we use is called methotrexate mm -hmm. uh, for, like for the rheumatoid arthritis. And patients come and tell you, oh, Dr. I went to the chemist, and the chemist was very, was telling me that this is for cancer or something. <laughs> yes, it can be used for cancer, but I'm not disputing. Yes. But in, in the doses for cancer, what the arthritis are, are very different. different. In fact, when children, the doses are what? Are very different. Yeah. The other options you can give, uh, the drug called chloroquine, it used to be used in the old days for malaria. But By the way, yeah. yeah, you can use it. Yeah, well, but you can use it for arthritis. Yeah, yeah. The problem with, with us Africans, you misused it. No, I would, I would say that everybody has has malaria. So eventually, the bug got resistant, so the drug was withdrawn. But uh, research has shown that it can be useful there. The drug called sulfasalazine can be used. The regular painkillers can be used on and off. Once they will give them steroids, the steroids is only for a short duration of time, so as to cause inflammation. But the main still are the, the drugs I've mentioned. And then there's some newer drugs that have been introduced in the market. They're expensive. We call them biologics or designer drugs. So there's, uh, there's some, mm -hmm. the cost usually is the prohibitive factor. Okay. Uh, there's one that costs about 200,000 every two months. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 200,000 yes. per what? Every two months. 
is around about 85,000 every month. So, but those are usually for patients who can afford and maybe who have failed the standard mm. treatment. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. 200,000. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Know, not many can afford that. Actually, I think a handful. Yeah. Literally, a handful can afford yeah, that. Yeah, and that, that's, uh, that's why we've been trying, because like in the 80s and 90s, the HIV medicine was very expensive. Yes. And the girls who really pushed were the, were the patients. Yeah. Look now, cancer. The girls who are pushing for cancer are who? Patients. The patients. So we've been trying to encourage our patients that you guys need to push. Yeah, push. Yeah. Because if you push a lot of these drugs, I'll give you, for example, like one of the drugs that is used in cancer, so used in arthritis. Mm -hmm. But if you go under NHF, you can't get it for arthritis, but you'll get it for what? Mm. For cancer. And right. that drug costs like about 250. 300,000, yeah? Yes. Yeah, so I, I think going forward, I think trying to petition the government, mm -hmm. show that the mm -hmm. people are here mm -hmm. and they need this medicine, something which might help at least lower the cost because arthritis is very expensive. Yes, arthritis yeah. mm -hmm. actually sounds mm -hmm. very expensive. Mm -hmm. And speaking of medication as mm -hmm. a way to manage pain, mm -hmm. is there anything else people can do apart from exercising? I know you said that some people go to a witch doctor. You know. <laughs> <laughs> because you know you because in your mind you're convinced that this mm -hmm. is a disease for old people yes by the time a 14 year old has it i mean mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something yeah. you know mm -hmm. but um i think simply put mm -hmm. joints are joints yes whether joints are on an old person or they're on a young person mm -hmm. a joint mm -hmm. is a joint mm -hmm. and when the lubrication at the joint I guess get severed somehow mm -hmm. arthritis will come at yes. any age mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not a matter of witchcraft yes you've said mm -hmm. medicine mm -hmm. is there exercise you know that people can do because uh sometimes i've seen they limp literally mm -hmm. and i'm asking myself how will they get their energy mm -hmm. to do exercise, exercise. or even mm -hmm. hydro hydrotherapy yes. and the rest so uh in that particular aspect uh there's something we have called rehabilitative uh, uh exercises and this mainly is to do with physiotherapy mm -hmm. and occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. So physiotherapy is basically when you've come, it's like rehab, mm -hmm. being taught how to walk again, uh, there's a flexibility of the joint, mm -hmm. strengthening of the joint. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, uh, physiotherapy is. Occupational therapy is a bit different because you're trying to restore function. Take for example, like if I'm like a cook, how can I use my hand when it's deformed? Yes. So th that's what occupational therapy is. Unfortunately, in Kenya, uh, we have physios and occupational therapists, but in terms of the equipment they have in like most of the districts, most, most of the counties, the sub-counties are not up to, up to par. So usually we need to encourage our patients to maximize on physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, exercise is good. And from research, they've been able to show that if patients who have been regularly exercising tend to recover faster, from arthritis. Secondly, it delays the onset of arthritis also. And third, can actually be able to prevent what? Some of these arthritis. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, the exercises, diet is important. The, we, right now we have a lot of high refined sugars. So these high refined sugars over time can actually have been shown to be implicated in some of these autoimmune conditions. Mm. So we need to be able to eat more healthy mm. food, more fruits, more vegetables, meat, or the high meats should be taken down because yeah. apart from causing the usual uh, autoimmune it can also cause gout which is yes. becoming a, a problem especially in the younger age group which should not be the case mm -hmm. yeah uh, amongst other other things of course yeah mm -hmm. all right and uh, we've learned quite a bit about arthritis today and the difference between normal arthritis and um autoimmune arthritis. Mm -hmm. Do you mind touching a little bit on the connection? Since this is wor uh, World Lupus Month, the mm -hmm. whole month, mm -hmm. could you maybe touch on the connection between lupus mm -hmm. and autoimmune diseases? Okay. So lupus is a type of autoimmune, con autoimmune disease. Uh, lupus, if you go back history, uh, what it means is wolf bite. Wolf bite? So, yeah, wolf bite, that's what it means. Okay. So the bite here, so the initial people uh, I think when the, when the first patients in the 1800s or whatever time it was, they'll get sky here. So then lupus name came from from there. So lupus is a, a very interesting disease because it's very common amongst ladies. I think the ratio is about 9 to 1. Age group is about 15 to about 55. Uh, and it's, it's a systemic thing. So arthritis or joint issues is one of them. Muscle is one of them 
heart is another one, tummy issues, brain issues, blood is also another way. So you can present in very many I forms. Someone may be falling here. Yes, even falling here. So some of the symptoms which the patient will pick up will be one weight loss, unexplained fevers, uh, feeling just fatigue, this unexplained fatigue. Uh, other things will get mouth ulcers. They get a cheek, a rash around the cheek. Uh, others who are very unfortunate can present with kidney failure. There are some who are very unfortunate. Uh, we've also seen other unfortunate fellows who have been diagnosed as mad can present as psychosis. Wow. Yeah, it can affect your brain that yes, much. Yes. Uh, and then another one, which is for ladies especially, these unexplained pregnancy losses. We, I remember there's a patient I once saw who had lost, I think, six pregnancies. Wow. Her husband six had left her, pages. I don't know, what, wow. having issues, and okay. she was pregnant on the seventh one. Unfortunately, she lost the seventh one. Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen her since then. But, and her but husband left her. Yeah, husband left her. And, and that's another thing about she this. She still has a lupus. She still has a lupus, but I don't know where she is. I haven't seen her in a while. Uh, I know this is some of the things. You know, the thing of some of these autoimmune conditions, a lot of stigma associated with it. And I like that right now people are coming out and talking about the lupus. Maybe yeah. I can mention a few people who the youth might relate to. Yes, please. Uh, like Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon yes. is a comedian. He has lupus. In fact, he had lupus nephritis, I mean kidney. He had kidney issues. He had to go for dialysis and all that. Uh -huh. Selena Gomez, the same. Selena had kidney. Gomez yes, had yes. She even had to go for a transplant. They replaced her kidney. Okay. Lady Gaga. Lady was, Gaga. Had yes, lupus. has lupus. With and all for that her, energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and her, in fact, if, if she goes back, I think either her mom or and somebody in her family had lupus. Tony Braxton wow. also has lupus. Her, she, her, she, I think she passed out one day in some interview or something. Yeah. Then for test, it had affected her heart. Oh, no. There's this rapper called Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy, sorry. Yes. Trick Daddy now is the, he has one that affected of the skin. We call yeah. it this quite lupus. So you can see it's a very common thing. And I like it's the people coming common. out. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm. 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 And um, I, I noticed you use past tense. Mm -hmm. Uh, this means that they've been cured of it? Not exactly. You see, the um, cure, <laughs> cure is a bit difficult because a lot of these autoimmune conditions we still are understanding mm -hmm. and we still do not know what exactly causes. We just know that if you are, it's more likely to be in ladies, okay. people who smoke, okay. who take alcohol. I've had like a lot of viral infections, uh, the family history. But we don't really have one particular cause. We say, like for malaria, we say it's a malaria bug. We say it's a typhoid bug, so treating is a bit easy. But for lupus, it's a bit difficult. And just to show you how difficult it is to treat lupus, is that in the last 50 years, there's only been one drug, one new drug for lupus, the last 50 years. In the last 50. five decades, 50, yes. there has been one new drug that has been introduced into the yes. market. So basically, it's been the same drug yes. the whole time. And it's so damn expensive. Oh about goodness. two million a year, the whole what? course. Yes, is it available in Kenya, baby? <laughs> it's not available in Kenya, but we still have women here that need it. Obviously. Yes, yes, yes. We still have it. So what we do is, um, like, you no, know, the lupus is it. It has. It's, I call it like a hydra. A hydra meaning that it has very many faces. Mm -hmm. So my face may be the heart, mm -hmm. another may be the kidney, mm -hmm. another may be the skin. So there are some treatments that are there, and if you're able to talk with your doctor, mm -hmm. they're able to tailor make the, the mm -hmm. treatment according to what you have. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they do well on, on the standard treatment. Right. There, are, there are some extreme cases where you may require them maybe to go out to the country to then access those particular drugs. But the main issue is that most of these patients come when they are very late, so even the standard treatment may not be effective. I yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. And now that you've talked about the connection between lupus and autoimmune diseases, mm -hmm. I hope our viewers are trying to catch up and continue to understand. Um, maybe you can discuss with us a little bit how, when it comes to autoimmune diseases, mm -hmm. <coughs> maybe how here in Kenya mm -hmm. we can change the numbers of what, yes, we don't have specific numbers. Mm -hmm. We have no idea how many people mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases. Like in America, we know mm -hmm. it's 300,000 mm -hmm. young mm -hmm. teenagers that have mm -hmm. it. But here in Kenya, we still don't know. That's true. Still, nonetheless, mm -hmm. we'd still like to reduce those numbers. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. what ways can we do that, apart from um, raising awareness? Mm. 
So I think the first thing is that we clinicians also we need to do research. I think that's the most important thing. Like if you do, I'm sure you try googling lupus in Kenya. There are not yeah. very few mm. data, mm. Uh, but over time there are a number of publications that come out. Like we have some publications on lupus. Mm -hmm. I have a couple. There's one on rheumatoid arthritis that, that are there. So I think for, for doctors is to publish. When you publish or write an article concerning lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or some autoimmune condition, it goes to the internet. So it means there's a number there. And that is what we need to just tell. If we go to the government, there's this is there, and we show them the evidence, mm. it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Mm. Uh, other things about, uh, about uh, arthritis is one, the, two, the stigma. The stigma is something which is, is a bit difficult because I've had, maybe I can give you this story, there's a lady mm -hmm. who has rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. So she came with her sister. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we chat, 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 she goes away. Mm -hmm. A few months later, the sister comes back with the sister now. The two sisters come. Yeah. Now, the first lady had rheumatoid arthritis. The sister, a few months later, develops what? Rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis. So in the midst of talking, I'm wondering how, you know, because where I studied, people would come as couples. Yes. Come husband, wife, husband, yes. wife. Yes. So I asked them, how come you guys are not coming with your husbands? Yeah. They told me that the, when the first lady got rheumatoid arthritis, the husband, bolted so she would come with her sister he left her. yeah 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 mm. <laughs> so when the sister got to matter arthritis guess what the husband also did what left her left too. her too <laughs> so i think oh stigma <laughs> i know is I know. that bad is that bad is that and bad and there's another the, the previous story you mentioned as mm -hmm. well the lady with the six miscarriages the exactly left her as so well. it's stigma what what are they uh, sorry before you go further mm -hmm. What are they seeing in this stigma that, that makes them literally take to heal and run? What are they mm. seeing? What have they heard? What is it that people are saying I about think. arthritis? Uh, I'll give you, for example, like, uh, like lupus. When lupus comes the first time, a very severe lupus, the first thing people think about is HIV. Why? Or cancer, because it has, ah, it's very similar. The symptoms. The symptoms, it's very, very similar. So that's the first thing people think, think about. Uh, other issues about, the, you know, this disease is bad because a lot of the patients tell me that people think I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. Because there are some days they just can't wake up. They can't. Because that day, the disease is just bad. They have fatigue, yes. joint pain. So you see, for, for, the, for these guys wondering, you look okay, mm -hmm. why are you in bed the whole time? Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of the, the issues about the stigma. And then also witchcraft and all that, yeah. I know a lot of people really don't understand about it. Mm -hmm. Like there's a very special disease called sclerodama. Called what? Sclerodama. Okay. <laughs> so basically it means thick skin. So you have like a skin that is hard like, a, like leather. Wow, leather yeah. skin. Very tight. Okay. Very, very tight. So imagine that to a layman. What is the first thing they'll think about? It's just witchcraft. Witchcraft. Yeah. And yeah. So I think stigma is something which you need to deal with. Mm. Uh, another thing I think is empowering our doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> we're trying, at least the number of rheumatologists are increasing and at least information is getting out there. So I think that's something which you need to do. Another thing is trying to involve government uh, in terms of uh, uh, management of this. Because you know, a lot of people don't understand don't know that we actually have guidelines for rheumatoid arthritis in Kenya. They were released like last year mm. uh, by the, there's an organization called Atruma Society of Kenya. Mm -hmm. The guys who, who are like, we are the rheumatologists who came together. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a guideline. Mm -hmm. which would help at least uh, with the matter. Unfortunately, we didn't get any government input, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, that shows you the, the lack things of that... Interest. Yes, lack yeah. of interest. Kenya, yes. we, are, we are a react kind of a government. Yeah. When things go bad, we don't do what? We yes. react. Yeah. yeah. We kind of wait until yeah. things have gone haywire, and yeah. then we're like, oh, mm. let's do something. Let's do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then it. the patient support groups, like where I studied, the patient support groups do a lot. Yeah. They do a lot. Mm. So they're the ones who actually fund the research. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, how do they fund the research? They usually organize campaigns to raise money, concerts. Uh, they even have shops where you would, like there's a Lupus UK, you go to a shop for Lupus UK, you find the, 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 the rubber bands, t-shirts, shirts, everything is there. So you can buy whatever you're buying, goes towards what? That Lupus particular, yes, yes, that's what. I think going for something which we can, we can do. And those are the girls who are actually driving there the change yeah, for the management. And even some of them, when they go to conferences and even teach doctors, mm. 
mm. about the disease because who better to teach the disease than a, than a patient. I see. I yeah. love how you brought up. There's two mm. things I'd like to talk about which I feel could have help a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yes, there are foundations for mm. all this. But you know how, for example, in the supermarket, mm -hmm. how you finish paying for your things. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just as you've paid for your stuff, mm -hmm. there's little things. How do you mm -hmm. call it? Tin yes. bucket things yes. where you put loose change, mm -hmm. come up on mm -hmm. a, like three bob mm -hmm. or something you mm -hmm. don't need, you can put there for donating. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's for children's homes mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. I feel maybe for some supermarkets they can change the initiative a little bit and yes. take some of the proceeds and mm -hmm. take them to diseases that are not well documented, uh, maybe like mental health mm -hmm. or lupus or mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. Another thing I think it would be really interesting to take a step towards is PSAs. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when you're watching, like, there's this uh, channel, I think it's called ETV e mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a Kenyan channel, I think mm -hmm. it's South African. Mm -hmm. But when they're, when they're uh, break time, they mm -hmm. don't have announcements. Mm -hmm. And even if they do, they're quite few. Mm -hmm. But they have facts, for mm -hmm. example, about Africa. So mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, did you know that the Rift Valley is this and this uh, and that? Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm thinking, not, not who cares, but can't we use this platform for something more important? Like, no offense, mm -hmm. but the, some of the facts I read, and I'm like, hey, I knew that. And I'm sure <laughs> I'm not the only one who knew that. Can we now use this to raise awareness? Can you throw some facts about mental health? Can you mm -hmm. throw some facts about young people having arthritis mm -hmm. or lupus or something? Mm -hmm. And I feel like we just need to really, really take every single initiative exactly. and exploit every single space we can possibly mm -hmm. exploit. Mm -hmm. And the people who are raising awareness, I'm so proud of them. Shout mm -hmm. out to you guys, by the way. Great mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they, they should continue pushing, and if there's a way I could help, I, I would love to help. Mm -hmm. But yeah, these are some of the ways I wish we could, um, things need to be publicized. Exactly. Even if it means exactly. to be put on TV for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. just a fact about our um, autoimmune disease. Yes. Maybe the next time, 30 seconds, a mm -hmm. fact about lupus or mm -hmm. something. Then people are like, oh, so it's not witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. oh, so mm -hmm. my wife who was acting funny like three years ago in Kamwacha, it mm -hmm. was this thing, mm -hmm. Unona. Mm -hmm. But without that, it becomes quite difficult. That's true. That's yes. true. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, this has been a great discussion. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can lastly discuss mm -hmm. on how, what are the differences? Because I'm seeing how they deal with it in the West is a bit different from how they deal with it in here. Yes. What are some of those differences? And Lastly, what can we pick from them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to dealing with autoimmune disease, what can we disease. pick from the West? Mm, I think the first thing would be empowering the doctors. We need to have more campaigns and teach our doctors better. Okay. And maybe also improve the infrastructure in terms of, we can't just have Kenyatta having the only public rheumatology clinic. Yes. Yes, we need to have more out there, there because imagine if I'm in Wajir or Mandera, and I have SLE, I mean, I have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. It means I have to come all the way to Kenyatta yeah. to be seen, then I go back. So I think that's another thing we need to do also. Mm -hmm. uh, like what they've done in the West is, like where, uh, maybe I'll give the example where I studied. Mm -hmm. I studied in the UK. Mm -hmm. They have this, uh, they call it the NHS. It's a national ho hospital service. It's like yes. a NHF in Kenya. Yes. But there's a bit more <laughs> Organized, I think, better than <laughs> ours. The, the receptionists are not it using helicopters better. to go to town, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so, like, there, what they do first of all, mm -hmm. uh, they really encourage education okay. for the doctors. Right. So, um, from the from the get go, from undergrad, once you finish, if you want to become this particular doctor, you already have your path set out. Mm -hmm. You go to this hospital, I do this, I do this, I end up being this. And then they were posted anywhere. Then matter whether you're from Wajir, you can go to Nairobi, to Bombasa. That's what they do well. And they also in between, they organize short courses. Like one weekend, discuss maybe just lupus. Another weekend, rheumatoid arthritis. And, and it's from the experts. Experts, experts, experts. Another thing which they have done is research. I know in Kenya, we really don't really care about research. But there, they really do a lot of research. And their research, is to improve the quality of life of the patient of course. and to drive down the costs mm. for management. Mm. And driving down the costs, if it means that I'm going to spend less treating this patient and save money, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And some of the initiatives they've done is that, uh, take for example, a patient has this long-term condition, the caregivers actually can take time off work, mm -hmm. 
take care of the patient, mm -hmm. get a salary at the end of the month, take care of the patient because they argue that if the patient is in hospital, eat up more money, that's a bad space. But it's being at home, being brought to the hospital, yeah. which I think is, is a good thing. That makes sense. Yes. Uh, other things which, which, which they have done is how they've organized their, their, their structure from the undergrad, I mean from the regular doctor, the consultant. So like the rheumatology clinics, how they run them is that you will see the doctor like about twice or thrice a year. That's what, and usually that's for regular, just for the reviews and everything. In between what they have done, the, there's the general physician. So what they've done that in each area, you have like a bunch of doctors who manage the common conditions. So they can't manage, they do what? They refer. Right. But at the rheumatology clinic, they have a nurse. Okay. So the nurse are the guys who do most of the work. Mm -hmm. So the nurse, their job is one to educate you on the disease, educate you on the medicine. Mm -hmm. Actually, I found it very funny that you know, in Kenya, we just prescribe medicine until the patient go. Yes. So there what they do is they tell you the drugs are one, two, three, four, five. And then afterwards, now you go and decide what you want. Then you start. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Those are amazing ideas I feel like we can pick up. Mm -hmm. And if there's anyone who is, <laughs> you know, vibing on the same vibration as our doctor over here and feels that there's some of the things we can change and there's some of the things that we can do to raise awareness on this particular issue, do remember it's hashtag health on Monday, hashtag why in the morning. And remember you can find me on joy underscore muchache. We do have to let this conversation go. It has been a wonderful discussion with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming and raising awareness on this particular issue. And also for raising awareness on this day that has been set apart specifically May 20th for autoimmune diseases. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joy Muchache. Coming up next is Youth and Politics with Hilda Wadidi. Do stay tuned.